Icing dates back to 17th century England. Early versions were poured directly onto cake. The cake was then put back in the oven until the topping cooked to an ice-like glaze, hence the term icing. Hundreds of years later, success never tasted sweeter. Today, icing comes ready-made in cans and tubes. No need to make a sticky mess in the kitchen. Just press the nozzle to transform a plain cupcake into an elaborate dessert. It takes a dozen different ingredients to make icing, beginning with vegetable oil shortening. They encapsulate food coloring in the block of shortening. This keeps the food coloring from becoming airborne as a mixer creams the shortening with sugar, which they pipe directly into the mixer basin. Sugar is the main ingredient in icing. Corn syrup is the next ingredient. It adds more sweetness and liquidity to the mix. The mixer arm spirals around the basin for a few minutes to blend everything. Then they add cornstarch, which will act as a thickening agent. They pour warm water into the mixture and beat until smooth. If the icing consistency is too thin, they thicken it with more sugar. This 1,000 pound batch of icing is done, and there's enough to fill 2,000 aluminum cans. A conveyor delivers the cans to fillers that inject half a pound of icing into each can. The system fills 3,600 cans an hour, and no one has to get their fingers sticky. Plastic nozzles now funnel toward the containers, and with perfect timing, a press seals one to each of the icing-filled cans. At the same time, a pump shoots air into a small hole in the bottom of the can. This pressurizes the icing so it can be pumped out when needed. The burst of air carries a tiny rubber cap with it, and it plugs the hole to maintain the pressure. The cans move forward and meet up with the applicator tips. There are four tips per can, held together by little plastic connectors. The four applicator clusters fall out of the feeder and land on the can nozzles. Clear caps then fall into place on the cans. A blade cuts a labeled plastic sleeve to the correct length. The sleeve drops onto the cans, draping them loosely for the moment. They ride by a spinning plastic disc that tucks the sleeves all the way down. Then it's into a dryer where the heat shrinks the wrap to the cans, sealing the icing. It's a perfect fit. Next, they make icing for packaging and squeeze tubes. They blend together the same ingredients, but in different amounts and in a different order. This achieves a thicker consistency. Thicker icing can be more easily squeezed out of tubes. For ready-made icing, it really is all in the packaging. A mechanized arm picks up the squeeze tube and delivers it to the filling machine. A vacuum pump sucks out air and any contaminants. Another mechanism orients the tube for filling. Nozzles now inject thick yellow icing into the tubes, but stop short at a complete fill-up, leaving space for the open ends to be closed and sealed by hot jaws. Once closed, the machine ejects the tubes. Each one contains four ounces of icing. It's about half as much as the can. To decorate with icing from a tube, the consumer squeezes it out of the bottom tip. To apply icing from a can, you pump it out of the top. No matter how you ice it, the result will be sweet. <laughs>